I just wanted to still be in the, in the spirit this morning as we sing that song because it's the most beautiful. Forget about the situation in the country right now. It is still the most beautiful. Uh, your future may be scaring you, but it is still the most beautiful. So choir, please, can you help us this morning? of your plan and purpose for us we thank you because you are beautiful for all situations and you are the joy to the world we thank you for what you have been doing in our lives we thank you for what you have been doing in this place and we thank you this morning for what you are about to do even as we go into your world thank you because we know the entrance of your world gives light and to ordinary people it gives understanding we thank you because we are called together this morning so that we can eat at your table and be fed of the bread of heaven. Spirit of God, let your word distill into our spirit. Let it bring instruction. Let it bring correction. Let it be direction. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the word of this morning be the answer to someone's prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let the, the word of this morning bring the healing that a man and women who are gathered here this morning have been waiting for. Let it be the help of our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, let your word play, put our feet on a straight path this morning. That everyone will leave this place rejoicing as one that found a great spoil of the teaching of your word this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. I yield my mind, my motion, and my will to you, Holy Spirit, that as vessel this morning, you will pour yourself out into every one of us, and we'll have more of you. We'll have more of you. We'll have more of you in the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Hello, Him. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Can we say a beautiful amen? Hallelujah. God bless you. You can have your seat in God's presence. Thank you. Please come put our hands together once, one more time for the choir this morning. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen. I bring you greeting this morning from our Father in the Lord, who in 
wisdom. I taught it faith that um, resident pastors of all our churches exchange their pulpits uh, on this occasion. That's what brought me here. And I believe that when they call the first timer after I'm done, I have to move from where I'm seated presently to the first timer seat, right? Because this is my first time here. Let's celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. And even though this is my first time here, um, it's not my first time with the set man here. Uh, we've been friends for over a decade. Uh, yeah, for over a decade. Uh, is worth celebrating. Please put your hands together for Jesus. And also for the set woman. Uh, <laughs> hallelujah. Amen. Mama D. The Lord bless you, ma. Amen. Can we celebrate uh, Papa D? Yeah. No, Papa J and Mama D. Can we celebrate them this morning? You can do better than that. Hallelujah. Amen. It's so blessed to be a member of this family. Rema Chapel is the home of the blessed people. And you see, when you come into Rema Chapel, wretched, you live blessed. Because you can't remain the same way you came. This is not the way I came into Rema Chapel. Hallelujah. Praise God. My story is long, but it's not for today. Um, so I want to thank God for this opportunity that we have this morning, that I have precisely to be in God's house and to bring God's word to you. Of course, I have to thank our Father in the Lord for what he is doing in the body of Christ. He's a tremendous, he's a great blessing to every one of us. I know some of you, you've never met him or have any connection or contact with him. But you see, you have been blessed just being under this umbrella. And you see, it's worth celebrating. So this morning, I want us to put our hands together for apostolic oversight. The apostle of God's word to the nation. Reverend George Adegwe, please, you can do better than that. That's not how we honor our fathers. You can do better than that. Hallelujah. Amen. As well, I want to thank God for Mommy Faith. Uh, this is a woman who had modeled a lot of things for many people. Uh, you may meet her quiet, but that quietness is loaded. Um, she's the author of Strength for Today, and she's the vice president of this ministry. And you see, where you see a man that is doing well, there's a woman beside her, not behind. Sorry, there's a, a woman beside him, not behind him. You know, before he's always behind. We say, oh, the woman is, but you see, he's beside. Hallelujah. And so I want us to celebrate our mother in the faith this morning, uh, Reverend Mrs. Olorotoi Adebue. Please, you can do better than that. I expect the sisters to do better than the brothers. Hallelujah. Amen. And I believe I'm among the young people. Praise God. Also this morning, I want to appreciate my, my brother, uh, I, I was telling him yesterday, do you recognize? I said yes. How many of us were there at Ibadan last December? Hallelujah. Oh, it is well. Praise God. And that's no other person but another minister in the house this morning, uh, Minister Sam. Please, can we put our hands together for Minister Sam? Kusoko, the Lord bless you. Uh, Mama could not come today, of course, because of the nature of our work. Please, my greetings to her. The Lord bless you. Thank you for what you are doing here. The Lord will continue to send support. And aid for your own destiny to rise in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This morning also I'm bringing greetings from Rema Chapel, Muritala Church, um, Ilori. I, I want to thank God for what God has used them to do in my life. You see, I used to tell them when time I get to church, you used to think, oh, the pastor is here to bless you. But you are equally in church to bless the pastor. I've been shaped in so many ways. I've been panebited. I've been, you know, made because... They are there. I'm better today because of the privilege I have to be there. And I want to thank God for them. I want to thank God also for my wonderful wife. I would have been here this morning together. Uh, for one good reason or the other, she can make it. So we thank God. Um, and I'm bringing you greetings from these people. The Lord bless you all in the name of Jesus. Don't worry. Your man of God is going to return shortly. He's also somewhere uh, giving them apostolic blessing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, because I believe this is the apostolic arm of ever-increasing world ministries. Do you know what I'm talking about? Are people here this morning? And I believe everyone here is an apostle. Turn to your neighbor and say, apostle. Call their name, apostle. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. So quickly this morning, 
let's go to the business of God's word. Of course, we can't be gathered here this morning if God had not permitted it. And all the glory back to him. And that's why, of course, in my spirit, I just felt we need to sing that song one more time. Because without him, we are nothing. Absolutely nothing. No meaning, no life. Yeah. Galatians chapter 6 verse 10. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 10. The Bible says, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men. Somebody say with me, all men. men. Especially unto them who are of the household of faith. For the minute I have this morning, I'll be speaking on the subject, the best use of opportunity. The best use of opportunity. Uh, I know it does not sound apostolic. Praise God. <laughs> but uh, you will find apostolic message in it. Uh, it all depends on the angle from which you are looking at it. The best use of opportunity. As I begin here this morning, the word that God gave us as a ministry this year to guide us and to raise our expectation of, as to what we should look forward to see in our lives or experience is the word soaring. This is the year of soaring. And I know many teachings have come from our set man here on soaring. I tried to follow up with last week's service on the winds and the wing of the spirit. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. And um, if I will go into that again this morning, uh, it will be as if I want to repeat my apostle's message. But I just want to emphasize to you that this year, you should expect nothing but soaring. That is the prophetic word. And you see, anytime God sent a word like that, he had already sent the provision to bring it to pass. I was telling them in church some month back, January precisely, I said, mark this statement. I never knew that the bag of rice, the cost of things, are going to go up that way. When the Lord laid in my heart to teach on positioning yourself for soaring. Because you see, if you don't rise, things would not but rise, even if you are not rising. So you have to rise. And so the word for the year, swearing, is, it makes more sense to many of us now than before. For some people, from the negative perspective. Because things have sore. But things do not, storms do not get egos unaware. They are always prepared before time. They see the storm and they know what to do. They know how to respond to it. So they, they are not laid back because there is a storm. They use it as an advantage to change their level. So this month also as a ministry, of course every month God also gives us a guideline, a light to guide our feet and to guide us in the path we need to walk. And this month is the month of abounding opportunities. And that is what is bringing about the teaching of this morning. The best use of opportunity. There are two major things that God is committed to. Let me quickly share them with you before I go on here. Two major things that God is committed to. Number one, God is committed to his word. Whatever he says is bound by it. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 12. Then the Lord said unto Jeremiah after he had asked him, what do you see? And then he said, you have seen where? You see? And then he made a statement. I would, see, this, this kind of words are the words that gives me the confidence that promises will always be fulfilled when they come from above. Not from the ogre at the top. Because the government does not have the power to fulfill their own promise. But God has the power to fulfill his word. He can bend the protocol. He can change the time and the season. Because his word must come to pass. And so he told Jeremiah, I watch over my word to hasten it, to bring it to pass. To bring it to pass. So God is committed to his word. And I, I want to say this on this note. That as a Christian, as a believer, especially the young faces I'm looking at this morning, the best thing you can do in your life to help yourself to get to the level God wants you to get to is to commit yourself to the word of God. 
You can't be committed to something that God is committed to and God will not be committed to you. It's not possible. I'm not a prophet or a prophet son, but my commitment to God's word is bringing different manifestations out of this life. So you have to make sure that you are committed to the word of God because that is what God is committed to. God, the Bible says God has highly exalted his word. For God, of course, when my young man was pray, um, praying, leading prayer this morning, I was talking about Jesus. He was talking about the word of God. And God has highly exalted his word because his word is what binds him to act. So be committed to God's word. The second thing that God is committed to, the major things that God is committed to this morning is that God is also committed to his work. To his work. The things he do. He's committed to what he says and he's committed to his action. God would never do anything that he has not said and what he is doing is what he has said before. So God is committed to what he does. He's, he's bound to his work by his word. If you expect God to do anything in your life, expect him to speak to you. <laughs> All you need is a word from God. Because once the word comes to you, the Bible says he watches. So even when you have forgotten about it, God will never forget. He made a promise to Abraham, we are still, the word is still coming to pass. Because he is committed to what he says. So God is committed to his work. He does not, when Jesus came, he said, I must do the work of him that sent me while it is day. Why? Because the night cometh when no man can walk. John chapter 9 verse 4. He said, my work is to do, the, my meat is to do the work of him that sent me and to finish it. John chapter 4 verse 34. So God is committed to his work. He's committed to his work. And God is still working by his word. I'm a testimony of the integrity of God's word. And so I'm saying that to give, to give you an appetizer and to prepare your heart so that you can receive something and take it home with you, with you this morning. Something that will shape your destiny. Something that will help you. Something that will add to the things that you already received from this pulpit. That will also help you in the journey of life. So this morning I'm speaking on the best use of opportunity. I will continue by saying this this morning about something that you will always have. Whether you are born again or you are not born again. Whether you are rich or not. Whether you are educated or uneducated. One thing as long as you are alive. <clears throat> excuse me. And as long as you are breathing. One thing you will always have is opportunity. You will always have opportunity. Irrespective of the season and the time that we are in. You will always have opportunity. In fact, opportunities abound more when there are difficulties. Where there are hardships. When it is hard to survive, you have more opportunities to rise. So when it's looking like the weather condition of the economy is bad, we are having better opportunities. I can say that to you. You know why? Of course, it's one of the makeup that God has given to me. To see the good part of every bad thing. Because there are some people, even when you give them something good, they see the bad part of it. I train, I, I'm, I'm trained to always see the good part of every bad situation. So even when it doesn't look like it's going to favor me, it's already a favor to me. <laughs> Why? Because of the nature of God to give us opportunity. So one thing you will always have. You may not have come from a rich home. You will have opportunity. In fact, that's the more reason why you, should, you, will, you are going to have more opportunity than someone who is from a rich home. You may not have, been, you may not have, have had a, a fantastic connection with people who are in power and wealth. But one thing you always have is opportunity. Being alive this morning is opportunity and is a great one. And we will always have opportunity. Your age does not matter. You will always have opportunity. Whether you have graduated from school or you are still in school, you will have your own opportunity. I remember back then when I was in secondary school, junior secondary school, and the, the things I'm doing now had always been there. <laughs> it has always been there. During school break time, I attended command the secondary school in Keja. And during break time, I would go to the field. There are some trees before the bomb blast took place in January 2022. Um, in, in the, in the, in the, in the, on the field there, those trees yield fruits. So what I do is I pluck those fruits, pack them, and take them to class. Ripe fruits. 
Actually, we call it fruit. They call the fruit fruit. How many of us know what I'm talking about? Hallelujah. Ah, we have a lot of children here. Praise God. Ooh. And then when I get to the class, I will just put it beside me. Maybe that's why I had so many reds in junior secondary school. Yes, I was almost a, a dropout from school. Because I wanted to live purpose. I wanted to start living in the reality of my calling before the time like Moses. Like some of us, Ambe, we're already ahead of God in his plan. So, after the break, when people return back to their seats and everything like that, they just ask me, guy, you get something there? I'll just open the politin bag and they'll be buying it from me. So, before they finish the money they are going to use at the closing time, part of that money is already in my pocket. With the money I'm supposed to use to go for my own break time. So, at the end of the day, by the time I'm going back home, I eat what I want. Woo! You, you understand what I'm talking about? Oh, because that is the wisdom that God has given. But the things started happening so fast. So I was having so many reds in my grade. Because my mind is on the money. My mind is on the opportunity. So irrespective of wherever you find yourself, your level, you always have opportunity. Let me define opportunity for us here this morning as we go on. What is opportunity? Opportunity is a suitable time, all right? set of circumstances suitable time or right set of circumstances that makes the doing of something possible when the time is set and the time is right to achieve what you want to achieve to, to achieve your goal and attain your goal it is called opportunity it's a chance for you to do something successfully successfully right now where you are with whatever you are doing or you have to do there are opportunities that are ripe for you to do some certain things successfully. Don't forget I'm speaking on the best use of opportunity. The Bible telling us in Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 11, believers, I return and saw that the sun, that the race is not for the swift. It said that the battle is not for the strong. Bread is not for the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding. Listen to this. Favor is not to men of skill, but time and chance happens to them all. You will always have your own time and you always have your own chance. So opportunity from the word, from that text that we read in Galatians chapter 6 verse 10. The Bible says, as we therefore have opportunity, let us do good unto all men. The word opportunity there in Greek is the word kairos. And I know this not, it's not, from, you are not, uh, it's not a, a strange word to you. Is that okay? Uh, because it's an apostolic seat. Hallelujah. Praise God. The word opportunity there is the word kairos. And I'm going to explain a little bit on that. And that word means occasion that is set or a proper time for something to happen. For something to happen. Some people may look around now and say, oh, what, what advantage do I have? Or what opportunity do I have in a time like this? There is still an advantage for you. This is the best opportunity for something to happen for you in, for good. Can I hear somebody say amen to that? So the word kairos is the word right time. So as we therefore have kairos time, kairos opportunity. And this word, I want you to take note of it. The word opportunity and time are used interchangeably. Because opportunity comes with time. Opportunity comes with time. The opportunity you have today to be a student will not be there forever. It will not be there forever. The reason why they encourage people to go to school early so that they can finish early is so that they can face the other business of life at their latter age. So that you won't have to be in school at the age of 60 for your first degree. So opportunity and time works together. So that's what Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 11 tells us. Time and chance. Time and opportunity. The privilege works together. We we'll always have Kairos moment. Moment for you to do good things. You always have it. You always have it. It's a time when conditions are right for the accomplishment of a crucial action. The Bible tells us in Psalm 102 verse 13. It said, thou shall arise and have mercy on, on Zion. The psalm is speaking. For the time to favor her, yea, the set time. That's what it's talking about. The moment 
for swearing has come. Can I hear somebody say amen to that this morning? The moment for your rising has come. Some of you are here this morning and you are in doubt of how your future is going to be. You are scared. But I'm here to tell you, you are entering a moment that is going to change your story positively forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me also go on this morning. That's the first thing about Kairos. is the set time, the proper time for something to be achieved. Let me also say this. Another definition of the word Kairos is that Kairos is a limited period of time. You won't always have it. You won't always have it. Oh, the opportunities are abounding, but they will not always be abounding. The opportunity to pray is abounding here. The opportunity to serve, because I see those some people, they refuse to be part of the workforce of the church. You are not helping yourself when you stay back from the work of God. You are not. Because there is a track record of those who serve. And there is a reward for service. There is a reward for service. You can successfully use your extra time while you are young. Just as uh, the, the, the preacher said in, in Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 1. He said, remember your creator now in the days. Is your old age? In the days of your youth. Why the evil days have not come? Kairos is a limited period of time. You will not always have the time to do all the things you need to do. When I see people come to church, warm the bench and leave, I have sorrow in my heart. And of course, it's because of lack of understanding. We started serving in the church at a very tender age. Though we started Somebody like me, I started serving, causing trouble. <laughs> because I didn't know what I was doing. And of course, when they see the, the, the same scripture says, uh, foolishness is binding the heart of a child, but the rod of collection, uh, correction. So they introduced the rod and the word, and it worked. So then from there, we started serving, and then we started teaching. Even at the age of 14, 15, I've be, I become a Sunday school teacher back then at home. Teaching. I was teaching adults, elderly people. Because service, you see, God shares service servants. You are sons, yes, but you also play the role of a servant. I believe I'm encouraging someone this morning to use this time because it's limited. It's limited. You will not always have this time. I will not always have this opportunity I have this morning. You will not always have the privilege to be seated here. There are people who were here before you and they have gone. There are some of them, if you go to them and ask them, how did you feel about the time that you had when you were in Rema Chapel, Ogbomosho? They will tell you, I regret that I did not join the workforce. Because there's no man who is normal who did not take advantage of good moments and never regret it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because this is a good moment of your life. If everybody seated here this morning is the workforce of this church, it's not too much. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, I hope you're a worker in this house. <laughs> because, you see, the church needs more people. More men. Jesus, look, he said the harvest is ripe. The laborers are few. Pray ye the Lord of the harvest. I pray for someone here this morning, God will touch your heart. And God will not just touch your heart. God is going to turn your heart. So that what you need to do, you will do it now. Because the time will not, will not always be there for you. It will not always be there. And that is why Ephesians chapter 5 verse 16. Ephesians 5 16 it says, Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Redeem it. We are in an evil day. The time we are in is an evil time. I'm going to read another translation. He said, these are evil times. So make every minute count. That's what the contemporary English says. Make it count. Don't waste it. Don't destroy it. Don't underutilize it. Eh, it's because I'm in, a, I'm in school. That's why I don't have time to serve God. That's not the reason. That's not the reason, young man. That's not the reason, young woman. There are people... Who stay in school 24-7. And when they are leaving school. 
they live from the bottom. They do not live from the top. Even though they were reading 24-7. And there are people who God is their head and their lead and their guide. And he will always bring them to the place where wisdom lies. And when they read, they read, they understand. And they read the mind of the person who is setting it because the mind of the person who is going to set the exam is in the hand of God. Am I talking to someone this morning? Make good use of every opportunity. Good news Bible says. Ephesians 5.16. Make good use of every opportunity you have. Because these are evil days. Make good use of it. Don't look down on it. I know there are some people who are close to you who are good examples. But you are making light of what they are doing. You make jest of them. You call them names. You think what they are doing is, is a waste of time. You're actually the one wasting your life. Make the most of your opportunities. Because there are evil days. It's a limited period of time. Colossians 4 verse 5. He said, walk, with wisdom, walk in wisdom towards them that are without. Redeeming the time. Redeem it. Redeem it. Make good use of this time. When you are with unbelievers, this one says, always make good use of the time. Don't forget I'm speaking on the best use of opportunity. Make use of it. Make use of it. My life is a, is a, is a testimony of using Cairo's moment. Cairo's moment. It is in the nature of God. It is in the plan of God to give you that moment. And this month, there is a promise laid before us. Abounding kairos. That when you turn like this, you see opportunity. When people come to me and then they discuss one thing, or maybe they are talking about one thing, I start seeing ten dimensions. I see in ten Ds, not in three Ds. I see ten dimensions of what they are saying. I've gone ten step into it and I say, ah. And by the time I start talking, they say, ah, were you thinking about it before too? Creative thinking. You just sit down and begin to analyze. It's in the nature of God to give you those moments. Moments where your life can be redefined. Yeah. Moments that I call turning points. Turning point. And that's why we need to make the best use of it. I'm going to, let me just keep this because of time. As believers... Opportunity is one of the things we don't use well. Believers don't understand the power of timing. Most of us. Timing. When you look through scriptures, you see opportunity after opportunity. Why some, they take good use of it, they make good use of it, some waste their opportunities. They waste it. Some underutilize it. But what is the best use of your opportunity God is going to give you? Galatians 6 verse 10. As we therefore have opportunity, the answer is there. Let us do good. <laughs> the best use of opportunity is for you to do something good with it. Let us do good unto all men. The best use of opportunity is doing good to others. Good to God and good to believers, brethren, and to all kind of men that will ever cross your path in life. The reason why God laid this in my heart this morning is so that our scope of this scripture can expand and we can begin to consciously, consciously begin to tread a higher path. And a swearing part. Because you see, most times when this scripture is read and when it is quoted, we always look at it from one angle. And that is the angle of generosity. You know, we say, oh, do good, be generous, of course, share your physical and material possession with people. That has been uh, the most interpretation. Of that scripture. But it's more than that. It's more than that. And I believe that that's the reason why God has given this word this morning. It's more than that. Doing good also includes rendering 
good service to people. Is somebody with me this morning? Doing good also means rendering good service. Quality service. I'm speaking now from the angle of excellence. Excellence. Because you see a lot of people, they speak in tongues, but their work does not show it. Their work does not show it. Excellent work. Good work. Let your light so shine before men, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16, that they may see your bad work. Is that what is there? Go see the good works. And of course, there is one thing your good work will do above every other thing. It brings attention on God. They will ask, who is the father of this boy? Who is the father of this lady? Who see, if you leave this place and you do good work out there, my apostle here will be very happy. Oh, that's my daughter. In fact, he may spend time thanking God and asking God for another daughter. <laughs> good works. Doing good, doing your work in a good way. Anytime you have the opportunity, it's the best use of opportunity. The best to do something good. Let me say this morning a little bit. Most of the people that suffer really, 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 I'm talking from experience now, are church people. Church people. We have suffered from each other's hand for too long. How do I mean? I ask you to do something for me. You are my brother. You know, he said, especially to the household of faith. Not just all men. Especially to those who are believers like you. Help me to get, fix something. <laughs> I remember a brother. <laughs> oh, dear me. That's the only phone I did not know the barrier site. <laughs> are you here with me? That's the only phone I've ever used in my life. I don't know where it was buried. <laughs> Every other phone I've used, I know how it ended. So, they told me this guy can fix the phone. So I went to him. I gave him the phone. <laughs> that was many years ago. I just remembered now. I don't know why that is coming. <laughs> but I will tell you. Hallelujah. And then he went with the phone. After a week, oh God, what happened? How far? The phone. He said he has given it to someone. Then he returned it. I saw that nothing was done, so I gave him back. If I knew, I would have cuckoo buried the phone myself. Rather than giving him money and not getting value for it. So, as at that time, it was the protocol officer of one of our reverend in the church, but not in the headquarter church. I will tell you where. So, he went with it the second time. Till today, I don't know what has happened to that phone. Let me now shock you. September 28th, no, September 25th, 25th of September 2020, I received a call from my father in the Lord. Hello, Alakba. Of course, that's the way he is. Ah, I'm here. Okay, I'm sending you to Muritala Church as the new resident pastor. <laughs> and I believe that with the things I've seen you do before, grace is available for you. I prayed, I called him back. Before I got to that church, that brother had left. He left. He didn't leave because the person who was there was leaving. Because there are a lot of people that are still there who were there. I never had the opportunity to meet him face to face. Of course, he knew that there is still something that he took from me that he did not return back to me. Hurting people in the church. You see, this may not sound uh, apostolic as it were. When I say apostolic, please, I'm just trying to say it because I'm not going to be giving you vocab. I've not got it to that level. But you see, if you read your Bible and you understand it, that's the way I'm talking to you now. Are we together? Because sometimes we try to uh, we try to 
out of trying to get into some things, we miss the main stuff. And some of those things come with simplicity. Doing good can change your life for good. But most people don't understand that. They don't understand. A brother of mine came to me some time ago. And then we were having a conversation. And I asked, and then he, he touched an area. And he touched, he touched me. He said, ah, the lab, there was a laptop he would have given to the children. To help them to connect. Because I take classes on Saturdays. It's a passion. <laughs> it's a passion. I still teach children in the children's church. Because that's my primary goal. Assignment. With great passion. With great passion. So the brother said, I gave it to so 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 person. In fact, he mentioned the name of the person. And he went away with it. This is five years. He has not returned the laptop. When he said it, the thing touched me. And then you see these people in church. Like some of you here. You said you are doing business. It's good you are doing business. But are you rendering good business? In the name of the, of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You come. But here you are. You are rendering bad business. Even among your brethren. You see what I'm saying now. You will hear it in master classes. In a different way. <laughs> okay, are you following me sir? When you go to business school. They will say it in another way. Hmm? But they are principle of the kingdom. They are kingdom principles. That if we follow them, we will see things that will follow us. Goodness will follow. Because you can't do good and not enjoy it. Five years. The system has not returned. Are you expecting it? He said, no, I'm not expecting it again. And they, they are heads of departments together in the same church. I hope I'm speaking to someone this morning. As we therefore have opportunity, because you always have in this church abounding opportunities. Opportunity to serve, opportunity to love, opportunity to give, opportunity to be a blessing, a worthy example abounding all around you. Some of you, your future business partner, your, your future connection to the nation is actually seated beside you. And is asking you to help him to fix just one small thing. Or to help him to do one small thing. And here you are, you are struggling with it. I pray that the Lord will help us this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. We often forget that the opportunity that we need to get ahead in life is actually in the opportunity that we have today. We often forget that. Yes, you are in school together. It does not look like anything. But you see, don't look down on that opportunity because that may be the only definition of you that person is going to carry for the rest of his or her life. The only definition. When they say, Bolu, ah, that wonderful, diligent young lady. Where is she? But when they say, Bayo, ah, Believe at home, paro. And then you begin to, in the same place. The best use of opportunity is to do good. Is to do good. All that God is going to give us, I said earlier, is opportunities. To all men, you will be sent to do good. Especially those that we are together in the faith. I was teaching last Sunday at the church in Morital and I told them, I said, the condition you have now, no, on Thursday, the condition you find yourself today is not because of the condition of the country. I told them that. I said, there are people in this same country who are smiling in this economy. Because when they had the opportunity five years ago, ten years ago, to prepare for the reality of today, they took it and they made good use of it. And there are people who did not use it. Today they are crying. Ah, the things are too high. The prices of things are too much. This and that. I met one Igbo friend of mine. I shook his hand. I said, now you people, they enjoy this time with me. I had to put myself in the picture. 
Because I'm not, I'm enjoying the time. Oh, there are so many things I will not say here this morning. But I'm enjoying this season. The reason why I'm enjoying this season is because God is still God. The condition of the economy, irrespective, cannot determine the way my life will be lived. So I told them, it is what you decided to do yesterday that determines your position today. Not what is happening in the country. The chances you missed. The opportunity you belittled. The relationship you mismanaged. You mismanaged it. If by the grace of God, my level changed suddenly from where I am presently and then it's up there. There are so many people that will just start showing up from everywhere. They are, they are still small. You know the size, the circumference is too small now. Because the higher you go, the, the more obvious you become. Live in the crowd. So one thing we don't use where is opportunity. Is opportunity. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 says, let us not be weary in doing where. Because there's a reward for every opportunity you use where. There's a reward for it. God does not forget your labor of love. He does not. So quickly this morning, let us look at some reasons why you need to do good to all men. Why do I have to do good to all men? Is somebody getting blessed this morning? Why do we need to do good to all men? Because that's what scripture says. That's what we find in the world. I won't emphasize on this if it's not there. It's written for us. For admonition. Why do we need to do good to all men? Number one, because good is, God is always doing good to all men. He's always doing good to everybody. To both those that are saved and those that are yet to be saved. Matthew chapter 5 from verse 3 to 48. Speaking about the nature of God and how that should be our nature too. The nature of doing good to everybody. Especially those who are of the household of faith. You are going to meet people, they won't appear like you can get something out of their life. But that may be the moment that will shape your destiny for good. There was a story, there's a story in the book of First Samuel 30. Let me quickly touch that. First Samuel chapter 30. David returned with his men. They came back to Siglag and they discovered that Siglag had been ransacked. The people there, the, their wives and their children, their livestock, their property has been looted and the city has been set on fire. The Bible says they cried. David cried until he had no strength to cry again. The people thought of stoning him but inquired from the Lord. Should I pursue? God said, pursue. Will I overtake? He said, you will overtake and recover her. And then they embark on the journey. Now listen to what happened. Verse 11 and 12. <clears throat> the Bible says they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David and gave him bread before asking him questions. <laughs> and he did eat. And they made him drink water. And they gave him a piece of cake. Three things. They gave him bread. They gave him water. Of course, if you give somebody bread and water, it should be okay, right? Hello? That should be okay. In this kind of economy, if you feel give person cake and bread together, eh? You can't. Because even cake has been divided into two. You eat some cake right now, you eat some bread right now, you say, oh my, my. Oh my. And two clusters of raisins making four. That's what doing good is. Now see what happened. And when he had eaten, his spirit came again to him. For he had not eaten bread, nor drink water for three days and three nights. And then after he had received strength, they now asked him, who are you? <laughs> and then he started talking. Maybe he wouldn't be able to talk. Maybe the time they are asking him to talk before they give him bread and water, the guy will collapse. 
and they will have to look for another GPS because at that time, that guy was their GPS. The place they are looking for, where they are going, this guy carry him, is inside of him. There are people, they may not look like helpers, but they are meant to help you. Oh, am I speaking to someone this morning? Because I've met people who never look like anything. But they've done too much for me. Too much. And so he started telling them, I'm a servant of an Amalekite. We went to Siglag and we ransacked it. We took wives, we took children, we took things. But I was sick. And my boss, that's a very wicked boss. <laughs> he missed, you see. Oh, glory be to God. Is somebody learning something this morning? The opportunity you miss is somebody else's opportunity. The boss missed an opportunity to be a good boss. That was his mistake. That was his mistake. He might have, uh, David and his men would have had to use more strength and energy to locate them. But it came so easy because he failed to be a good boss. That boss is not an honorable boss. Kill all day, one person. They said they left him to die because he was sick. How many people in your department have you left to die because you discovered that they are living in sin? There are people who stop coming to church and we never go to check on them. And we say church is not growing. <laughs> we left them. We left them. And so he told David everything David knew, needed to know. He, he rewarded goodness. Instantly, there. The Bible did not record that that man was killed. He should have, that man deserved to die because he belongs to a bad group. Hello? But David, a man after God's heart, saw an opportunity to do good. To do good. It's good to be good. That is what God does. He's always doing good to all men. That was, see, God can call David a man after his heart because he's always thinking like God, seeing like God, and acting like God. A man like us. A man like you and I. He did good because God is always doing good. Matthew 5, 43. You have heard, it has been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them that despitefully use you. That's the best use of opportunity. <laughs> Verse 45. That you may be the children of your father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good and send rain on the just and on the unjust. God is always doing good. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in our he is always doing good. That's why we need to do good to all men. You were somewhere before you got saved. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. The word means all men. From every tongue and every tribe and every race. All men. All men. Never let this opportunity or chance you have to do good in that place of work. In your department, in school, in your department, in church, in your position at home. To do good to all men. Where the church is located in Muritala, Ilori, where I serve, there is a there is a woman there in front of the church that always foments trouble. When I mean trouble, that, that was what they told me that she foments. There is one trouble that she just finished packaging and released <laughs> new fashion. And the program is already running. And I'm aware of it. But you see, it can't do anything to me. Because the principle of doing good brings you under a covering that some people can never understand.
So they say, the woman is wicked. Ha, ah, this and that. So when I got there with my wife, I have a story. I give people benefit of doubt. I don't relate with people based on what someone say about them. I don't do that. I will meet you first, six months, nine months, to know you for myself. Before I know what position I'm going to occupy or place, the way I'm going to place myself in relationship with you. So when I got there, I saw it. I said, okay. One day we were praying and the Holy Spirit told me. He said that the only answer to hatred is love. He said the cure to the problem is love. He said, what did I give to you? He said, I gave you love. Were you lovable? No. He said, love that woman. He said, love her. So anytime they share things in the church, during fasting, you know, we still take pap. <laughs> Do you still take pap here? Yeah? Oh, blessed be the name of God. Hallelujah. The path we are taking in Muritala is not made in Muritala. It's because we are close to the headquarters. We go there to collect it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. So anytime we do that, I make sure that they share it to her. Whatever you are serving us in the church, serve them outside. Because they are outside the church. Recently something happened. December, we were in church, we were doing service. After the service, somebody came and then they said they brought something for me. I said, from who? They said, from the woman outside. I said, eh? I'm serious. Because the kind of trouble she foment, you don't want that kind of person in your life. If, I, if you see her, you just want to go your own way. But see, God has used that woman to bless my life. I can talk about it this morning because the word of God is true. She did that. By the time we started the January fast, normally one of our, some of our young people in the church, they would just go and buy pure water and bring it for anybody who wants it. So this particular day we needed it and then they couldn't get from her. Maybe because of something she had. And then she now called the usher. I said, as long as you are still here and you need water in this church to drink, come and be carrying the pure water in my, in my store. Oh! When I heard that, I said, God, that is the transformation we are talking about. It's not the amount of, if I speak in tongues and don't do good, as our heart may not be changed. And you see what God now told me recently when I heard of the things she's doing now. He said, it's not time for you to preach the gospel to her again. Tell me, will she not want to listen? Because they are giving me some bad reports now. And I am greeting her. The way I'm greeting her is as if I never had anything evil about her. You know, I told you earlier, I always see good of every bad. Because that's my opportunity. So many people have missed vital opportunities because they don't understand this principle. The same Paul, the same Saul who was killing the Christian, God looked at him, he saw an apostle, he saw 13 books of the New Testament. He said that is him. Sin. The way God sees people. That brother may not be praying well today. There is a man like that in those days in Rema Chapu headquarters. Baba told me about it. He told us in the sermon. I never met him. But I'm, I'm sure you must have heard about Bato, 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 Bato. Uh -huh. You've had Bato, Bato? <laughs> doing good is good. Because God is always doing good to all men. That's the first reason. Number two, why do I need to do good to all men? Number two, because it follows the pattern of the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. It follows the pattern. If you will ever be like Jesus, you must do good to all men. It follows the pattern. It follows the life of Jesus Christ. Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. When about doing good? He was always doing good. Luke 22. When they came to pick him at the garden of Gethsemane, Peter drew his sword, cut up the hair of a servant of one of the, of the high priests. You know what Jesus did? Jesus did not say, you deserve it. You people deserve it. <laughs> he saw opportunity to do good. He, he's, he's always doing good. He picked the hair and put it back. As if nothing happened. And he told Peter, keep your sword. Because they that uh, are killed by the sword will die by it. Keep your sword. That is the life of Jesus. That is the ministry of Jesus. That is the pattern of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
But today, I'm afraid and scared the kind of Christianity and Christians that we have in the church and in the body of Christ. We choose side when Jesus has no side. <laughs> Hello? A woman came to Jesus. Syrophoenician woman. I was trying to get something from Jesus. And Jesus said, you don't deserve it. <laughs> and the woman said, eh, I, I know. You said the healing is the bread of the children. But even dogs. <laughs> the woman put herself in a good position. And Jesus, of course. You ask me, was Jesus not going to do what? Was Jesus not going to help the woman? No. It's a moment to reflect his power, supremacy, and his grace to extend to anybody. 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 And that's why you see some people, they never call the name of Jesus, and they are rising. And they say, ah, why is God doing this for this person? He's not doing my own. <laughs> it's the pattern on the life of Jesus and his ministry. Number three, why do we need to do good to all men? Wow, wow, time is fast spent. This is what we are called to do as believers. Number three, this is what we, is our calling. That's why we need to do good to all men. All men. Everywhere. Including your fellow brothers and sisters in that department. All men. Wherever you find yourself. Some of you, some of you are going to graduate very soon. You will have to leave this place. But wherever you go, this is our calling. To do good to everybody. This is what Christianity is all about. Love your enemies. Do good to those who love you and those who hate you. Do good to them. To those who, who bless you and those who curse you. Jesus said, do good to them. We are called to do good. As we have there for opportunity, let us do good. That's what we are called to do. Psalm 34 verse 14 and Psalm 37 verse 27. He said, depart from evil and do good. Do good. Tell your neighbor, do good. I can't hear you. Tell your neighbor, do good. <laughs> Ephesians 2 verse 10. He said, we are God's workmanship. We are created in Christ unto good works. That's what we are created. That's what we are made for. This is our calling. This is what the church is meant to serve. Redeem in the time. For the days are evil. Huh. So how do you? Doing good. Because we are already in an evil time. Goodness is now more scarce because of scarcity of things. <laughs> you know, Gary used to be surplus before. No matter how bad, how the team bad, poor man, they drink Gary. Tell your neighbor it won't be bad for us. Because God is always doing good. Let me cut this short. Number four. Why do we need to do good to all men? We need to do good to all men. Listen to me, church. Because we all, we need all men. As believers, we need all men. Jesus died for all men. If God is going to bless a man the way he helped Joseph, he didn't go to Jacob and get somebody from the lineage of Abraham. He used the butter, the baker. He used Pharaoh. He used the Nebuchadnezzar for Daniel. Oh man. Look at the, the role Cyrus played in rebuilding the temple. Uh, sorry, the wall of Jerusalem. Look at the role he played. The scripture says in Matthew 7, 12. Therefore, I say unto you, whatever you want men to do to you, he said, that's what you should do to them. That's what you should do to them. And then in Titus chapter 2 verse 11, he said, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men because we need all men. This church needs all men. In the learning, they used to have uh, Mogaji. I don't know whether they have something like that here. Traditional councils around everywhere. Do we? Not really. Okay. 
Don't worry. That's, that's why it's good to go out. <laughs> that's why it's good to go out. So that you can learn f- from other places and, you know, you will not think the way it is here is the way it is everywhere. It's not the same way. But irrespective of that, we need all men. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. Say shall men give. Not only believers. Any kind of man. I know there are people here this morning. If the so-called richest man in this country <clears throat> show up here and say, I want to help 10 people. Everybody will go out. Sir, do I lie? Everybody, everybody is number 10. Irrespective of who is number 1 to 9. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. When they were sharing rice in Lagos recently, now everybody won't collect. But several people died in the process. Oh, my sister opened her mouth. You don't follow news? <laughs> it is fair. Several people. God uses all kind of men. To get his work done. If God is going to raise you. He, he may not bring someone who is speaking in tongues. He may bring someone who is saying. Allah Akbar. He may bring someone who is worshipping idol. That's why you need to be good to everybody. Uh, because my landlord is a Muslim. I, 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 you have to do good to your landlord. You can't tell what God has placed in his heart to do for you. Let people know. See, he said, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. When you have love one for another. Love is doing good. Is doing good. In closing this morning, and thank you for your patience. Praise God. If you are going to be consistent. Listen, in using the opportunities that God is going to bring in, that, that God will be bringing to you. Listen to this. You need the spirit of Christ. You need the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Spirit. You need the fullness of him. You must come under the influence of the spirit that led Jesus while he was here. While he was here. I will not assume that everyone here is baptized in the Holy Ghost, but I desire that everyone here is filled with the Holy Ghost. Because that's the only way that is sure for us to be consistent in good works and doing good. Not hurting people, but healing people. Not destroying people, but building people. Building people. Galatians 5.22 But the fruit of the spirit is love, is peace, is joy, is long suffering, is gentleness. And then you find on that list goodness. That is the spirit of goodness. Your flesh will always struggle to do good. Especially to someone who is not doing good to you. It's difficult. It's difficult. God had brought me through some stages in life. There was a particular year someone uh uh, will I call him colleague? I won't call him colleague. Someone who is so close and had the privilege to influence something for me in life and in my business. Believer, talk speaking, casting out demons, and he tried to block it. And he wasn't ready to do it behind me, he was doing it while I was there. I. Uh, what Aman, what Mordecai felt, you know, because his case was decided behind him. You understand? He was not there. This one was terrible because I was there. And what makes it worse is that we are believers together. You know, Aman is not a believer. <laughs> I left that place. I was saying, Jesus, because it happens right in my presence. I was saying, Jesus. I was just calling Jesus. I can't imagine. That we have come so low to be hurting ourselves in the body of Christ. So when I got home, I told my wife we prayed. A week after, two weeks after, I needed to do something. The Holy Spirit gave me an inspiration. 
So I needed to just do that stuff and package it and get ready for December celebration. And the Holy Spirit told me, he said, the first person you are going to give this package to, this new invention to, is that person that ought you two weeks ago. Oh my God. The, it, it was looking like I'm talking, you, you know, he said, that is the person you are going to give that thing to first. I said, all right. So I packaged it. I went to the person. I said, Merry Christmas. It was not yet Christmas. I said, Merry Christmas. The kind of turning point that I had that year. I was recently looking at my email and I look at, there were, there were times that there was no money in the account consistently as a businessman. And my current reality is as if it never happened before. Because that year, God changed that story. Why? Doing good. Spirit of goodness. Ah, it ought. What, what happened to me that day ought. You see, and I couldn't tell the person until after four years. You can imagine that. But in my heart, I've forgiven. One day, I was called upon to come and preach in February about love at the headquarter church. In the middle of the night, I was preparing. And then, the Holy Spirit said, I, I just felt something in me. And the Holy Spirit said, you need to discuss this with that person. I said, he's higher than me. How can I be? He said, that's what you are going to do. That's why you need the Holy Ghost. He will step you into it. Even when you feel you don't have the strength for it. He will elevate you beyond your natural physical limitations. And you'll be able to do what destiny is calling you to do. Because it's destiny. It's destiny. It can be hard. With the flesh, but it is easy with the spirit. And that's what we are going to pray on this morning. The flesh, the flesh profit nothing. It is the spirit that quickens. John 6, 63. The words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. By the Holy Ghost, you see, you can fulfill this mandate. This obligation, you can do it. You came to church, especially in the choir. <laughs> Oh, and then you see one sister, recently I, I, I had to sit with, on a case and, and they started telling me things and I was like, you can't imagine that. <laughs> Don't let me go into it. And the sister said, I noticed that anytime I'm singing, I'm leading, the, they, they don't back up where the person will just use his voice anyhow. <laughs> Is everywhere. It's only God that can tell this morning. Praise God. And then I told the sister, I said, you know what? It's the way you are feeling. Because the devil is a bastard. I used to tell people, I'm always careful to make a statement because I may make it well. And the devil will go and register it. And read the, the statements from the back. You know he's a bastard. He's always at the back. And that's why Judas was an easy prey. Because Judas is always at the back. So if you're always at the back in the church. Change your position. What am I saying this morning? The best use of the opportunity that you have in life. Every opportunity that will come to you. Do good with it. Let the mind of Christ be the mind you carry. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The same mind. That's the mind you need. You can survive any economy, hardship, whatever. You can survive in that workplace if you are filled with the spirit of goodness. You will not be there, but they will fight for you. <laughs> I've been there before. I've been there before. I would not be standing before you this morning if not for the help of the Holy Spirit. 
through the ministry of through the power of the spirit of goodness. I want us to rise this morning. I want us to rise this morning. You will be able to help someone that did not help you when they could help you. You will. Spirit of goodness. When you help someone who failed to help you when you, they could help you, what do you think will happen when you finish helping them? That's the best way to preach the gospel. You will never struggle to tell people about Jesus when they see Jesus in you. He talked to me badly. I will say my own back is not necessary when you have the spirit of goodness. People are watching every of your move. Every decision you make, every step to take, every step you take, they are marking it. He called himself a Christian. No? Spirit of goodness. Please just lift up your hands this morning. And for, a, for just for a few minutes, I want you to talk to God. I believe you understand these things that God has shared with us this morning from his word. I believe there is a portion of it that we need to walk on. Just release yourself this morning and say, Holy Spirit, fill me all. I want to be full of you. Let the spirit of goodness let it be stirred up in my heart. Let me grow in your goodness. So that I can use every opportunity you give me. Where? Best use of it. Best use of it. Best use of it. Because these opportunities, they are time bound. They will not always be there. They will not always be there. They will not always be there. Whatever you do, Bible says, do good to all men. To all men. Go ahead and begin to declare this morning. From today. I'm doing good. In every relationship, I do good there. Whatever my hand touched to do, I do it well. I do it well. I serve well in that department. I do good in this church. Goodness is my nature. In the name of Jesus. I'm using the opportunity that God is providing for me to do good in this world. I'm redeeming the time by doing good. By doing good. By being a blessing. By being a blessing. By touching lives. There are messages you may not be able to preach in words, but you can preach them in action. You can demonstrate them. You can leave them. You can leave them. This church will be as better as we become good in our walk with God, in our walk for God, in our walk with other people. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Oh, Let the spirit of goodness be stirred up on the inside of us. Let it rest on us. Let it change the nature, the bad nature, that negative nature. God is giving someone a new heart this morning. The heart of goodness to forgive those who hurt you. To help those who did not help you. To love those who hate you. To give to those who did not give to you. God is giving you a new heart. A new heart this morning. A new heart this morning. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you praise. 
Oh, let's bow our eyes closed this morning. I just want to make this call before I take my seat. You are here. You have given your life to Jesus. You are baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. You are having a walk with God and you know it. I'm having a walk with God. Just raise up your right hand wherever you are. I'm born again. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Please just raise up your right hand this morning. Wherever you are, just do that. Now, if your hand is not raised, is it that you are not born again at all or you are born again but you are not baptized or filled with the Holy Spirit yet you've seen us praying spirit and praying tongues but you don't understand what it is just put your right hand on your chest wherever you are this morning we just want to pray with you for a few minutes wherever you are God bless you my sister I can see you from there the Lord bless you wherever you are God bless my brother there just put your right hand there I need the spirit of goodness I want to have an encounter with the source of goodness God himself, God himself, God himself. There's still someone you need to, you need to come under this prayer this morning so that your life can take a new turn. Now, if your hand is on your chest, the Lord bless you. Wherever you are, your hand is on your chest this morning. I want you to do me a favor. God bless you, my sister. I can see you from there. My brother, God bless you. Just do a favor for me. Just do a favor for me. Leave your seat and let us pray together here. Wherever you are, just leave your seat. Just leave your seat. Please let me tap. If your hand is up, you can open it, look to your right and look to your left and encourage that brother, encourage that sister. Just encourage, encourage that person and say, be prayed for, be prayed for. I don't know, counselors, do we have counselors here? Do you have counselors in the house? Do you have counselors in the house? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Do you have counselors? Pastor, do you have counselors? All right, God bless you. I, I see some ends on their chest. Uh, probably maybe after the service or before the service end I would like us to pray for these people you shouldn't leave yet that's the essence of the message so that you can have a change of life a change of story Father we give you praise hallelujah in Jesus name we have prayed